Hey, it's Rich, the Louisiana Hobby Guy. You know, a while back I did a video called Cut the Cord on Your Laser Engraver. And I thought in that video I was going to be able to get all laser engravers to connect via Wi-Fi. Unfortunately, uh, I only got the DSP version to work. And ever since then, just about every day I get an email message that somebody wants to connect their diode laser in another building or another room or whatever it might be and today we're going to address that and show you the solution and the solution is really very very simple and all you need to have is uh, a machine laying around it could be anything it could be a chromebook it could be a android tablet it could be an old laptop it could be an old computer anything that's laying around that has a usb connection and, uh, or I should say port, a USB port. So if you have a device laying around, an older computer or whatever, that has a USB port, we're going to be able to get you hooked up today, and I'm going to show you how. And I'm going to put a stop to all these messages that come out, where I can finally say, you know what, here, go watch this video, and you can now connect remotely with your diode laser. So let's go. Okay, so now I'm here in a web browser at virtualhere.com and this is the website and this is where you get this software it's so so simple to set this up I'm gonna go through this very quickly so that you can see it we're gonna come over here and we're gonna to go to USB server we're gonna pick our operating system whatever you have Linux Windows Mac <clears throat> if you want to put this on a NAS or uh, Android whatever it might be however you running Lightburn I'm using Windows I'm gonna use Windows right here and I'm just gonna come down here and say click on this link virtual here server for Windows 64-bit and I don't think they have it for 34-bit uh, I really don't know I'm not gonna get into that so I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and then I'm gonna hit open down here and I'm going to get this message. Do I want to allow? Yes. The next message that I'll get is the uh, firewall. So I'll allow access to that. And now I have to bring these two over. You'll see that I've got, let me get rid of this window. Virtual here USB server is running. And I say OK. I'm done <laughs> so I'm done with the server so now we're, we'll pretend that I've just done this on the other shop which I have already I just did it on the other shop computer so I'm gonna stop the virtual server on this machine and close it and then now if we go back to the website I'm gonna come back into this office come over here and see where it says client right next to servers I'm gonna click on client and in this office I want to have the client so I'm gonna come down here Windows here's my operating system 64-bit Windows right here I'm gonna click on that I'm gonna save that one and then I'm gonna open that one and there it is now there may have been an install here probably because I already have this installed it didn't go through it but I think it was just a one button click OK that's all it was and now I do have the server open on the other machine and I have the client open here so if I were to right click on this controller and this is the the Lunyi 4-axis control is the control board on the CO2 next door. So you know that we're connected here because it sees that control board from here on my uh, office computer. So if I right click on that and I say use this device, there you go. <laughs> it's just that simple and maybe you can hear it homing in the background 
But uh, that's how easy it is to set this up. Anyone can do this. Couple of clicks, couple of minutes. It's taken me so much longer to explain it to you um, than it actually takes to do it. So let me go stop using this device now. I right click and stop and I can close this. And now that will be down in my taskbar next to my clock. I can always click on my clock. You can't see it in this video because it's on a different screen. But if I click on the icons down next to the clock and then in there, there is an icon that says virtual here client. And if I click on that, uh, it will bring the, the uh, I think I have to right click on it and click show. There it is. And then it comes back. So uh, that's just how easy it is to, to set this up. So let me show you how, how it really works on camera. Everything now set up and working. All right, so I am at my main desk in my office now and I want you to see that I've got Lightburn open and you can see I've, I am disconnected right here so there is no laser connected and here is the Monport 40 watt so if I were to select that again it's still disconnected or if I right click on here it's disconnected <laughs> because it's just not connected to this computer however let me bring up my little USB guy here, if I can find it. It is down here, hidden back here. So here is the virtual here client. And this is what's available on the server, which is next door in the other shop. So uh, by looking at this, I know that the Lunyi 4-axis control that is the control board for my uh, 40 watt that's in the other shop. So I'm going to right click on click on that and I'm going to come over here and say use this to device. And you heard it just as it just connected. So let me pull this out of the way, put it on the other screen and bring light burn back up. So now uh, if I were to choose the COM port, I'm not sure which one it is. Let's try uh, COM4. All right, let's try COM3. And there it is. I hear, I hear it moving. See that? <laughs> now this is a an image of next door, the other shop next door. So there is the laser. There you can see light burn running on that machine. Okay. And you, I'm clearly not sitting there. <laughs> so uh, what I'll do is on this machine here, I'll click on the map icon. And you see that I'm able to move the laser from here. But I'm not sitting at the laser where it's connected to. Um, so how this whole setup now is very, very simple. I've got a regular webcam that's just on a long USB cable, uh, a 30-foot cable that runs next door. And I've got my camera set up there independently, which you're looking at on the screen right here. But this uh, CO2 is plugged into this computer and it is connected to Lightburn in that shop. I am now connected to this CO2 laser going through this computer using its USB connection on the uh, virtual port. I mean, it just works fantastic. And I know so many people were, after they saw the Wi-Fi connection, uh, they were like, oh, wow, I need that on my diode. And it, unfortunately, that wasn't available. But um, now let me let me come back to the camera. Just I just want to show you one more time. Uh, make this a little bigger. If I go to laser and hit home, you'll see that it works perfectly from here. So this is all you need. It really is so simple. All I did was install the server on the uh, work on the other computer, the one that's actually hosting the laser, the one that's plugged into the laser. I installed the server there and I installed the client 
over here. No configuration, no IP addresses to go to, uh, nothing to do except to start, install the programs. Uh, just that easy. Now, I did get the free version, so I can only connect to one device at a time, but you can also get the paid version if you want for $45, I think, and you can connect to more than one device at a time because you could have, technically, you could have uh, two windows open over there of Lightburn and be running two lasers in a shop that's next door as long as you have a camera where you have a good sight of what's going on in there. So, um, there you go. Answer to all of those questions. I mean, the hundreds and hundreds of questions that have come in uh, about, I want to hook up my diode laser the way you did on the Wi-Fi. Well, forget about hooking it up on the Wi-Fi because this is so much easier. All right, so there you go. Uh, easy solution, virtual here, something that um, I've actually been using for a while for gaming. So, um, and a lot of people use it to, uh, you know, with their Raspberry Pis. And there's, there's just so many uses that uh, lots of people have for this. And probably don't even, uh, probably a lot of people using it that don't even realize, hey, I can control my laser engraver uh, just the same way that uh, I do my gaming. So, um, you know, I've been wanting to do this video for a while. It was scheduled for late January, but now I've got a bunch of other things on the schedule for January. And I thought I would take advantage of this um, vacation time between Christmas and New Year and get a uh, video done. So now uh, this video uh, should help a lot of you people that are out there. The beauty of this is that you can use this on any diode laser. Now I don't suggest that you use this on a CO2 because you really should be connecting on the CO2 by Ethernet. Um, and you know I did get a little feedback from Lightburn when I did that video about uh, cut the ca the cable to your uh, cut the cord to your uh, laser about how you should be on a solid uh, wired connection and uh, that it's not a good idea to use the Wi-Fi on a CO2 and that that is true but uh, on the diode lasers it doesn't make a big difference if you have a stable network and most people do nowadays um, the USB streaming is not going to be a problem for you so you just want to make sure that you don't, whatever machine that you use, if you use a uh, Windows machine or a Mac or an Android tablet, whatever it might be, make sure that you go into the settings and you don't allow the USB port to go to sleep because it's very common uh, for most machines to put USB ports to sleep or into um, suspend mode, you might say when they're not being used and this happens you know quite a bit where people can't connect to their laser engraver because their USB port has gone into suspend mode so uh, you just want to check your settings and make sure that you're uh, you don't have any settings in there that will hibernate the USB and you'll be okay and it's just so easy to do and I know the video took quite a while to get through but that's because I'm trying to show you step by step what to do. But this really was very, very simple. And you can probably do it in under two minutes. The, the download is quick. It's easy. There's no registration involved. Um, I, I, I've never seen anything that's this easy to install. Download, install on one, one machine. Download, install on the other machine. To start the server and you're done. I mean, how, how much easier can you possibly get? <laughs> so anyway, um, to keep from getting bored during this Christmas break, I thought I would push this video out. I think the last straw was getting a, a message on the discussion board and a private message from someone who said, hey, here's a way that you can connect. And, uh, you know, I'm saying to myself, yeah, that's that's on the schedule for late January. You know what? Let me push that up and push it out right now and uh, get it out during the break where I have nothing to do. And I know that a lot of people have been waiting for this for a very long time. And uh, so here it is. <laughs>
I hope you enjoyed it today. And for you diode people that have been out there waiting for it, you know, uh, just find any old machine, hook it up, start the server, and you're good to go. So I hope you enjoyed the video today as much as I enjoyed making it for you. I know I didn't want to take a whole week off. Well, I was planning on it, but uh, I had to just jump back in here and get this video done when I read that message. So, as always, I thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.